All right, World 5, Skyland. Let's go on ahead and get started. Now, before we go to Stage 1, I highly suggest using a P-Wing. The reason being is that there are a lot of secret passages throughout this stage. Most of them you can't get to without flying up. And it's really too much of a pain to try and do it with normal raccoon power. If you fly straight up at the beginning, you'll run into a pipe. Now, if you get a running start and duck through this actual small opening here, you'll run into an item box and you'll get a mushroom. But we're going for something better. Go down and get the pipe, you'll come back up. Now, I have no idea why I'm flying that way. Now here's a pattern. Knock out every second block. And then every first block, you'll find a one up. Now if you continue flying upwards, Try not to get hit by the chomp. You'll find a P block and a set of coins. And that's pretty much a good. Oh, crud. It's pretty much a good chunk of the first level there. Now you do have to watch out for the snapping piranha plants. They are quite dangerous and they take a huge bite in more ways than one. So with that said, since I'm little, I may have to take the easy way out. Just run under here. And I was wrong, you don't get a mushroom, you get a music box. Okay. Alright, stage two. This is another one of the stages where you don't want to go in as little Mario. If you have at least a fire flower, go for it. And go down the pipe. Now you have two paths on this one. As you can see, I accidentally took the lower path. Maybe on another run through, I'll actually show off the, the top path. Go in the middle pipe and allow yourself to go down into the lake. Watch out for the cheap cheap. Now in this one, you have the buzzy beetles. They actually pick up the white blocks and throw them at you. So be on your guard for that. Also, you have the piranha plants to deal with in here, too. A good way to knock out these buzzy beetles is to try and get them before they get you. And that's pretty much it for stage two. Okay, now we have the match card game. I just got tired of calling it the in-house. Let's see what Toad has first. Sweet, I get another Tanuki suit. Now something about these item boxes that I've never mentioned before, you're only allowed to have a total of four full item boxes. Kind of like having four full energy tanks on Mega Man, the second one. So I'm almost at my limit. The good thing is, most of the items that are already there, these are the ones I really need. So, with that said, 
if I do get anything with this, it's really not going to hurt me. And that's an if. So you go down the pipe. Now you have two choices. You can either go to stage three, fight the Hammer Brother, or you can go to the Mini Fortress. Really, when you go to the Mini Fortress, all it does is it opens up a second path. Not really useful if you're playing as by, by yourself like I am, but it's really useful in two player. So I'll show you anyway. Just have to be careful, watch out for the pit. Watch out for the thumps also. So after you get a running start, what you'll have to do, the easy way through this, is to fly straight to the top. Ah, and I can't make it. Alright, let's try it one more time. Actually, I should have started off with the star. Ah, almost had it. Let's see if I can use my turbo button to get up there. Nope. Man, this is really difficult. Well, I can't try it anymore anyway. I got hit by the thwomp. So I'll just have to muscle through the stage the hard way. Knock out these blocks. Look out for the thwomps and also these beams of light. And just try and muscle your way through the stage. Now here, you're just going to have to hop, hop. If you stand there too long, you'll get hit by the thwomp or you'll fall into the lava and die. So use the same formula to beat Boom Boom and you've conquered the mini fortress. Okay, let's see if I can earn some extra lives first. I guess not. Alright, let's get rid of the first hammer brother. They use the same formula as the ones in past worlds. Just knock them out from underneath. I'll go on ahead and take care of this other pair too while I'm here. A little bit easier since I have Raccoon Mario this time. But the best way to beat a Hammer Brother? Fire Mario. Okay, let's go to stage three. Go down the pipe. Now you do have the spiny, you do have the spiny enemies here. So be sure to watch yourself. Grab the power up. Now if you go a little bit, you'll see a Goomba in Karibo's shoe. Make sure the Goomba is under the block, knock it over, and then hop in the shoe. Now with this shoe, you're pretty much invincible. Not only do you get to stomp on the enemies, as you'll see in a few minutes, hopefully, stepping on the chomping plants won't phase you either. Go down the pipe. 
and see if you can hop your way through the rest of the level. Keep in mind, if you do fall in the pit, you still die. And you are able to get different power-ups while you're in the shoe. Now, why can't the frog suit be this useful when it's on land? Doesn't even move as slow as frog suit Mario. Oh well. Now we go to the fortress. Before I do, this is another one where I highly recommend use a P-Wing. And the reason being, you can just fly over all of these obstacles. Just try not to get hit in the process. Especially by these thwomps, they are a pain to avoid with the P-Wing. Now this is why I suggested using the P-Block. As you can tell, I'm using the turbo buttons now. You get to fly over the wall and grab another one up. And it's just fun to knock, over, knock these blocks out of the way. At least to me. So anyhow, this is the easier way to get the actual bonus. I mean, the actual secrets in this level. Trying to do it the other way is quite the pain. Just make sure you don't fall off the cliff and die. Come on, there we go. Alright, and that's all for there. I think I'll just knock some other ones over just for, just for the heck of it. You're actually halfway through the stage at this point. So the timer really does not pose that much of a threat. Ooh, that was close. Alright, that's enough. Don't think there are any more secrets. So now, go up the pipe, watch out for the thwomp, the thorns, and the beam of light. Go up the next set. Go up this pipe. Now from here, if you didn't use the P-Wing or somehow you lost it, you can go up using the vine. But I think I'm just going to fly up there. Now you're on the second part of Skyland. Alright, stage four. This is one of the more difficult stages, not only in Skyland, but the game itself. Because now you have the platforms that constantly spin, you have the ones that stand still that actually bend to Mario's weight. Plus you have the ones that you saw in World 3 that spin every so often. So I highly recommend using Raccoon Mario for this part, just to maintain your balance the best you can. 
Also, if you at the beginning, if you fly upwards, you'll land on a set of platforms. You'll be able to skip all of this. Now, be careful. This lake of two is a pain in the butt unless if you don't have Raccoon Mario. Key switch. Let him throw as many spinies as he can. Then touch the card to finish the level. You'll always get a one up no matter what. Well, unless you die, but yeah. Alright, stage five. Go down the second pipe after you smash the blocks. Hit the big one, and you get a Tanuki Mario. Now be careful. You do have these donut platforms to deal with. As we all know, they do fall if you stand on them for too long. And there's stage five. All right, let's see if I can actually get some matches now. Shoot. Eh, at least I got a star. Okay, now here's an example of only being able to carry four boxes full of items. Watch what happens when I get in the box. It just overlaps and deletes the former. Let's see if I can get at least three extra lives. All right, three lives, sweet. Okay, now you do come to another fork. You can choose to go to stage seven or stage six, then Toad's house. I'm going to show you both. As Raccoon Mario, of course. You'll find that most of the stages it will highly be recommended to use Raccoon Mario. Reason being, short platforms and lots of lots of enemies. Now here, you have these flying buzzy beetles to deal with. You see, if you land on them and stand on them, they will start flying. But the key thing is, don't get hit by them. Because they will take away your power. They will turn you little. And if you hit them again, you'll die. Now this P block actually makes the stage a little bit easier. Just a little bit. So we're at the end, just going ahead and get myself another one up. or two alright before going to Toad's house I'll go on ahead and play stage seven now here's a glitch in the game I'm, I know it's in the US version but I'm not sure if it's in this one let's see Uh, I don't think it is. Shoot. I think it's in the US version only. Ah, stupid piranha. Go down this pipe. Now, that's actually a good thing I'm Little Mario here.
and you're about to see why. Hit the red Koopa Troopa, get the coins. Now there is a mushroom in one of these blocks, but I really don't want it. You'll see why. Grab the star, grab the other star, go up the pipe. and run for dear life. Now the reason I didn't want that super mushroom is be because of the fact you have to press up and A when you're entering into a pipe from above. And it is extremely difficult to do. Alright, we got a music box. Okay, now for the fortress. I want to save my Tanuki suit for World 6 or 7. This stage is tricky because you have short platforms you have the fireballs and you have the lava pit and you have the dry bones troopers and also a bunch of boo ghosts so grab the star and just go as fast as you can and try and keep your balance and take out Boom Boom using the exact same formula. The key thing, if you have trouble with this mini fortress, take your time. You're given plenty of time on the clock to be able to finish it. So no rush. Again, shoot. Shoot. All right, stage eight. The key thing here, just run. Don't worry about the enemies. Don't worry about the power ups. Just run. Or just die like I did. I'm going to try a different approach. Not only am I going to be Super Mario, I'm going to go in there with a the star. And just run, 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 run. Because that Laker 2 is annoying. And it will kill you if you give it a chance. Now, more skilled players may be able to snatch the power-ups. I usually just run through that stage just for that reason. It's so difficult. But if you just run through it, try not to fall. 
Try not to hit the lake or two. They're more of a threat than the Koopa Troopers are. Now for this one, I'm going to play as Fire Mario. Now this is one of the automatic scrolling stages, but this one's unique. This one goes diagonally. Which I think is pretty cool. Just be sure not to fall off the platforms and time your jumps. Time your jumps and you'll be alright. Now you do have the the flame shooters but they could be taken out with your fireball. That's exactly why I picked Fire Mario for this one. Otherwise, play as Raccoon Mario. And there you have it. Alright, now for the real fortress. Ah, the king got turned into a bird this time. So now we're on the fifth doom ship of the game. Be on your guard. Because you have a lot of flamethrowers. And you also have a lot of bullets to deal with. Yeah, they are everywhere on this stage. Everywhere. Take cover down down in that pit if you can. Just don't stay there too long. Now if you can, go along the top here. And this is why. Look at all that you have coming at you. That is very difficult to get through. If you have good reflexes and good timing, or you've memorized this part of the game, more power to you. Doesn't it look like Mario's like blowing his nose every time he throws a fireball? Especially if you do it with the turbo button. It looks like he's blowing s snot fireballs. Just a little rant. Now with this one here you have Bully Cooper to deal with. And as you see, when he jumps, he will shake the ground. Which means you can't move if you're on the ground. Be very careful because he's known to cheat. If you get stuck on the ground while the earthquake's going on, he will shoot you with his wand. Not good. Okay, so the King of Skyland is returned to normal. Okay, so now we're at the end of Skyland. We get a letter from Princess Toadstool and she gives me a Jujum Cloud. Now a little bit about Bully Koopa. Bully Koopa is the oldest of the kids. And he bullies people around, especially if you're smaller than him. He will take advantage of you. He thinks he's cool and he has a gang, but he can't bully anyone to join it. And he would take over the Mushroom Kingdom as well as his dad's kingdom if he just be quit being a big bully and let him do it and he likes to listen to greaser music from the 50s of course it's in Nintendo style got that excerpt from the DVD 
the Super Mario Brothers 3 series. Alright, so Skyland was a little short to me also, but it was very challenging, unlike Giant Land. Giant Land seemed to be a walk in the park. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to save state here. And I'll look forward to seeing you all when I play World 6, which is Iceland. Be sure to have plenty of fire flowers, my friends. You will need them in Iceland. I'll see you there. Till next.